All right. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today on our May edition of planning a website rede redesign. And we have three um, brave souls who are here to talk about how they survived it. And um, I still have PTSD from one four years ago. So uh, I think, you know, uh, this is an important topic for all those who have just gone through it in the middle of it. And also um, who are thinking about going uh, through it. So I would like to start off by saying a very special thank you to our sponsor, User Active, uh, who uh, is sponsoring the call today. Um, a little housekeeping before we start. Please ask questions. I do this every month. And so uh, any questions, any comments, anything you tips, tricks, please put them in the chat or, you know, you can be crazy and come off mute and ask the question live. Um, we are here for a dynamic conversation. Um, so please don't be a stranger, <clears throat> share is caring, and we'd like to uh, hear from all of you. Um, you know, sometimes doing two things at uh, once is hard for me. So uh, Michelle and Anya are also here to um, come off of mute if there's been a question in the chat and I haven't seen it, which is possible. Sometimes they go fast and trying to listen and read at the same time. Well, you know. It's old dog, new tricks. It's it's tough. So um, they'll come off mute and prompt me if anything. Um, so I would like to say a special thank you as well to our three um, co-panelists today. So Joel, Roland, and Shavam, I will ask you guys to introduce yourself because you will do a much better job than myself. So Joel, how about you kick us off? Sure. Uh, I hope that I do a better job than you, at least. So I have some knowledge of myself here. But, uh, but I've been at SignUp here, SignUp Software, for one year uh, and two months. Uh, so, And it's actually my first time uh, inside the Dynamics world and community. I come previously from a CMO role at a ServiceNow partner. So, But I wanted to move over to working more with products. And then this opportunity came up. So yeah, so this is my first deep dive into the Dynamics world, so to speak. Uh, but then regarding sign up quickly, I can take that as well. Uh, we launched our flagship product XFlow over 20 years ago so, and um, has been focusing on the office of the CFO and mainly uh, AP automation, automating invoices uh, for companies inside the ERPs, FNO and BC, uh, BC, back then NAV and AX as well then. So we're built inside. Uh, but we are focusing now also on developing more products outside of that uh, as well going forward here. So we are. So that's also something connected to websites, of course, going from one niche and then multiplying with more products uh, in the product portfolio, basically. So, so yeah, that was quickly about me and uh, what we do here at SignUp. Great. Well, we'll probably learn a lot more about you and the whole marketing process um, as we make it through this hour. Um, thank you for coming. And Roland, how about you? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, sure. Um, so I'm Roland Chi. I am the marketing manager at TMC, so Technology Management Concepts. Uh, we are a VAR of our partner uh, a lot of you guys have seen us around events and the community we've been presenting this ecosystem for over 30 years um, i've worked for tmc for about 10 years and i've been marketing SaaS products for um 15 years um very happy to be here thank you for for sharing uh with us today and last but definitely not least, uh, I'm going to butcher your name all hour. My apologies in advance. Uh, Shvam, uh, please tell us a bit about yourself. Sure, Tanya. Thank you very much for uh, giving me this opportunity. And uh, well, my name is Shivam Shukla and uh, I'm the marketing head at Dynatech Systems. So uh, I've been in the marketing field from last nine years and uh, it's been a quite a uh, adventurous journey for me. It's not just about uh, B2B SaaS. I have worked for different industries as well, but uh, it's just been uh, two years for me since I have uh, been into Microsoft Solutions Partner. 
company and uh, here i uh, take care of all the marketing initiatives and uh, i uh, usually provide the suggestions for the company which can give them higher revenue chances and also uh, you know the way through which they can reach out to their customers which can include different channels of marketing and website is one of the thing that uh, i will say is uh, the most uh, important thing for any marketer because in today's digital space website is our digital property so yeah that's what i've been taking care of here at dynatech systems about our company so uh, we are a cmmi level 3 uh, company microsoft solutions partner with uh, 300 plus employees we are uh, currently operating in five uh, different countries and uh, i'm taking care of uh, their marketing initiatives for uh, the whole region so yeah that's it uh, about me so very excited to be here and to uh, you know share our journey how we have uh, redesigned our uh, presentation of uh, website and everything Oh, so, yeah. thanks for for being here five different uh, regions that um i'm sure keeps you very busy and up at night and i think that is the uh one of the big reasons too why we're here today and such an important topic is because like you you said the our website is kind of our first entry into um yes. when people come to visit us so um I think also we have so many people who uh, look at it um, from different aspects of a business as well. So I'm sure we get a lot of opinions and stuff, but we'll we'll we'll, we'll get to that point uh, later on. So let's start by getting the sticker shock out of the way. Um, how long ago did you do this redesign? How long did the process take? And if you're willing to share, how much did it cost just to kind of give people uh, a ballpark of what they should be mentally uh, prepared for when um, when going forward with this? So, um, Joel, how about you start us off? Yeah, sure. And actually, we uh, had done it in two phases. Uh, we did the first redesign of the Sign of Software website and launched in October. Uh, and we did. We needed to release it before community summit, basically, because we rebranded <laughs> that uh, for like a half year. Uh, we spent the process there doing that, and we needed to get it done before community summit. We're part of the keynote, so that's why we just we need to get this out. So that was more or less like a simple redesign. And now, since then, during Q1 here, we have focusing a lot on uh, on the technical parts, SEO things, and things like that as well. So I would say like in october the first one and then now in q1 uh or q2 now we're launching the updated one uh, so it's been a process <laughs> it, it has been so yeah and uh what was the second question there was it around the cost or like yeah, yeah around the yeah. cost um if you're willing to share even if it's a percentage i mean or... i mean you can build a website for three thousand dollars you can build a website for two hundred thousand dollars i mean it can cost uh, better the first one i can say is in the lower thousand uh, just because yeah we did a lot ourselves as the team as well we we just ordered some templates and uh, we get help with the design and then we built the website from the ground up me and my colleague here and just put the pages together uh but now uh the second part here we are doing like a redesign of it all uh once again and then it's more expensive so uh we're not done yet though so it probably will be more expensive but yeah. i would say actually that it's worth putting in the time and actually now planning beforehand and just you know exactly what you want to do you can be more efficient and we're a very hands-on team so we do a lot of ourselves as well uh and helping except i'm not a developer you know so sometimes you, yeah. you need help with that kind of stuff but just like putting the website up there we're a very hands-on team and everybody pitch in so uh so yeah I don't, it's a a floating answer but i hope you get some out of it at least <laughs> no I, I think that's good and i think when we look at costs we 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 think of the cost of an agency or someone but there's a lot of internal costs like you're saying that okay. internally there was two people full-time working on this project so when i'm thinking of costs, uh, it's not just you know when you're writing a check it's the internal t costs that 
and time that it takes to to build this out too. And I think yeah. that's a piece that um, certain an emotional people cost. Maybe under <laughs> an emotional <laughs> cost. <laughs> yeah. That that's a whole other um, happy hour that we would have to do exactly. for that one. Yeah. Um, but yes, there there's definitely different uh, types of costs that we have to look at um, when we're doing this. How about you, Roland? Um, tell us a little bit about uh, your experience. Um, well, I've I have redesigned websites uh, many times throughout my car throughout my career, and it's always. Um, almost like a new experience every time uh, as, you know, technology and trends and good practices change over time. Um, the last full redesign that um, I've worked on was about two years ago. Uh, I am currently preparing for another full redesign. And obviously between, you know, last two years and, and, uh, uh, and now uh, we have done uh, multiple light redesign where we take care mainly of the home page and some very specific strategic pages. Um, and when it comes to the cost, um, we do most of it internally. So we do work with a SEO agency. This is kind of, um, it's not specifically to the web, you know, website redesign. We uh, work throughout the years with them and it's been many, many years, and uh, they uh, they can take on some of the uh, SEO side of the redesign, as well as some back-end, uh, more technical server side, um, um, you know, workload for us. Um, and how long does the process take? Uh, usually a light redesign, as I mentioned, takes about a month and a half, a month, month and a half, depending on how many pages and how complex we're changing um, everything. Uh, but when it comes to the full uh, website redesign, it can take up to, I mean, Joel just said it, you know, it's a on progress uh, thing that you learn as you go. Uh, I would say on average three to four months, uh, if not more. Yeah. You're never I think done. That... You're never done. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. No, you're, you're, and I think that's, the, you're, yes. you're never really done. By the time you've learned it, it's time to update it. And I think um, having that balance between um, internal and external help uh, to get things going uh, really keeps you, you on track as well. And uh, Shavat, what about you? How how long did it take? Um, who was involved in the project and, and so forth? So uh, like uh, Ronald said, uh, you know, I would like to completely agree with him. You know, it takes a lot of efforts when you go ahead with the full fledged website redesign and a normal two or three pages redesign. So when you are planning for a full fledged website redesign that we have planned and uh, we have done it uh, three months ago, we have just made it live and it's just been three months to us. Yeah, thank you guys. So uh, it's just been three months to us and how much time it took us. So uh, uh, we have planned it for uh, like three months, but it took us around four months to do the whole process because you know how much large, uh, larger your website is and uh, how many web pages you have, how many blogs you have and the other aspects of uh, your website. So it does take time to plan all this. And when you are planning to redesign the whole structure of your website, you want to create a new experience for your users. So that's why it took us uh, around four months. And uh, regarding the costing part, so uh, I, I cannot uh, you know share the whole uh, uh, okay. <laughs> exact uh, cost structure. But yeah, I can tell you, which causes the major, uh, you know, costing which uh, happened was in, you know, we were planning to get it on uh, one of the CMS software. So we have used HubSpot for the same. So uh, their subscription cost was one of the major costs. And we do take uh, help from developers. So, uh, yeah, we have hired one uh, outsource uh, agency of uh, developers so that has cost us a little bit and uh, rest uh, we have followed the jewel plan here so uh, we have uh, you know trained our internal team regarding that and uh, how uh, he has explained that uh, you know he and his teammates used to uh, uh, gather the data and uh, 
you know modify the whole template on their own so we have done the same part so yeah so it took us uh, this kind of efforts when we planned it yeah. you know and yeah i have yeah. a question since you're we're allowed yes, to unmute Anya. and ask questions <laughs> please yes of course so almost all of you said that you do a lot of the work internally can you just tell us what your websites are built in what wordpress yeah yeah we're in wordpress okay yeah we uh took from wordpress to hubspot so okay. yeah that is something different <laughs> I, I used to have hubspot and wordpress working together and then i decided okay. to go fully wordpress okay that's nice yeah, that was the last rebranding. Uh, re, uh, re <laughs> okay, so you had them both. Uh, I mean, yes, a... uh, the blog part was on HubSpot, ah, okay. and then the uh, website part, uh, more static, was um, on uh, WordPress. Got it. So, yeah. So we decided to migrate it to HubSpot uh, because of the you know security concerns and a uh, few of the you know we need uh, some people to go out to when you talk about wordpress then it's an open community and uh, you know when you talk about hubspot so they do have a good uh, integration of tools on the back end so that has helped us a lot kind of to go ahead with uh, yeah. and i think it's we we shouldn't like when we think marketing we only think about you know the template or the look or the colors but we do have to, you know, bring it back to the science of what is, what does the back end look like? How do we, um, what does it look like under the hood and how is it structured and how, how do you want to, how do you want to structure it? Who do you have? Like you, like you mentioned that we, you need to have some developers or you need to work with some agency that, that has developers who can help you with this because it is as technical as it can be creative. So um, yes, what I'm trying to say is that marketing is a science and an art uh, for all those who follow monthly, you know, that I try to say that in every uh, conversation, because I think it's important that marketers are not just seen as creative folks there. We do have, you know, technical brains behind us. So um, thanks, Anya, for, for calling me out and keeping me honest. So um, let's keep moving on to, so that's how long it took um you got to work backwards so how did you how did you know you needed a redesign like what were some of the 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 cues or was there a trigger that happened internally um joel what what made you go oh yeah like well i think i know but yeah. um kind of take us through the process yeah. of how did how did you decide I mean yeah, I mean, when I started here, I mean, I wouldn't do it right away because it, it, sign up has never, uh, it's very easy to start with that as the first project, uh, but I didn't want to do that as well because sign up in general, histor historically, has never been a marketing driven organization. We, we sell 80% through partners and then the rest that come through the website know about us, maybe filling out a form here and there, ask for a demo. But there wasn't really a, a need right now to do that when I started, even though I thought about it. But I, I, I started to look into the brand because the biggest challenge was the brand and alignment. So when we did that, I built a brand platform here together with a team to just like containing everything from values, you know, to the visual identity. So when we had that done, then we also need to like look at like how do we uh, the website we have sales material and all of that so every it was part of a much bigger project uh, but when we got to the website as i said then then it was just like we need to do it quickly the first time so so then it was just like a smaller project from the beginning since as i said we didn't really drive anything through the website people mostly used it as a content site people just came there sent a link and then you had information there but now uh, so, so so that was like the first uh, the first thing I wanted to do because it was very unmodern in general, but uh, but we took uh, version one here in October, and now I would say we are soon at version three. We're actually in the middle of the two sites now, so we have launched some new pages. But if you go to our page, maybe I shouldn't say this, and you look in the menu and you click on certain links, you actually land on the old one. So so we're in the middle. But on Friday, everything will be launched on the new one. So that, I'm really excited about that, though. But uh, but yeah, I, I knew it from the start. But then it's a process and. Uh, it's about doing it the right way as well. No, it, and and you share. I don't think any of us are pretending to, well, 
some of us are our branding and website experts, but uh, I think it's important that we know that, you know, we when we look at our peers, we're like, okay, not everyone, it doesn't have to be perfect on the first shot. And then it is an iteration and we do have to go through different phases because how do we eat an elephant? Usually one bite at a time. So right. uh, I think it's important to not underestimate how big one of these projects is. So it's good that you have bits and pieces and you know how to how to start it off and also like when we took a strategy it's a decision of strategy wise also to start driving more traffic and driving more revenue through the website is the hope to get more there mm -hmm. so also now in the second phase we went into looking into like how can we optimize it optimize it build an editorial calendar not only to drive traffic but also create content that is more about thought leadership you know and connecting that to a brand to our brand story and in general building demand maybe on linkedin and how we can you know utilize all content in different ways and then also also the technical parts and things like that of course but just like everything goes into it so i mean so now now the plan is that we will drive more traffic more pipeline through the website so then it's a different story now we need to do this before this we didn't need it so uh, it's also like, yeah, what's best for the business for the moment as well. So there's so many parts that goes into it. So it's, yeah. yeah. Oh, no. And, and the, all good triggers. What about you, Roland? Uh, how did you know it was it was time for uh, redesign, rebrand, all the above? Um, yeah, I mean, first I want to say that, Joel, that this is super exciting. Like that's one of the most exciting moments for a marketer when you come into a company that is, you know, into an industry that is now shifting to really need more marketing. It's super exciting because whatever you do, it's going to have a positive impact. Yeah. You know, it's going to it's going to look better than what you had. Um, so, I yeah, I went through that like maybe eight nine years ago with tmc when they started to really heavily invest in marketing and that was one of the most exciting moments in my career for sure uh now it's trickier because we have already advanced so much more on our website strategy content strategy that the changes start to be harder to um you know uh, uh identify where you have needs right so obviously the first thing um i was gonna say is that i went on xflow website and then dynatech and then that's when i realized i needed to redesign <laughs> but more but more seriously that's a nice um, career <laughs> Uh, no, more seriously, after. this <laughs> is um, this is a joke, but uh, I think it shows the importance of you know kind of having a market research kind of mindset. I am constantly looking at uh, newer website, newer partners, uh, competitors. Um, you know, even you know outside of our industry, specifically Microsoft, but other software. Um, uh, companies out there so this is kind of part of my uh, weekly monthly you know uh, uh, education so you get a feel eventually that your website is starting to be outdated in some aspects of course it's not everything that collapses at the same time or that looks old but you know as you do this continuous um uh, observation uh, you obviously get a sense of when uh, uh, when you you know keep thinking that your competitor's website is better than yours you know that's your sign right mm -hmm. <laughs> most of the time you're kind of in between you know oh I like how they present that uh, but I prefer how I do this etc but eventually uh, you have this feel that it's time to change. Uh, obviously in my situation it was a little bit different because we went through and I told you that we went through um, a rebranding so for those who see the this TMC logo, this is kind of our new logo. It has like uh, maybe, I mean, it has less than four months. Uh, so we went through a full redesign uh, of, um, sorry, a full rebranding. And this rebranding obviously kind of uh, uh, requires a um, redesign of our website and not just our website, obviously, the entire, you know, marketing assets, uh, resources out there and how we present ourselves to the world. So for me, it was the change of branding that makes me, you know, know that I need to redesign, but also uh, you, you user experience, like um, we have noticed uh, through, you know, research and, and monitoring that uh, our work, 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 website workflow uh, flows uh, had some gaps um, and so you know redesigning the website is an opportunity to rethink uh, the journey uh, the user experience um, you know some functionality but um, yeah yeah that's uh, in general uh, why uh, we're starting to prepare a new one
Can I ask you a quick question, there, Roland, regarding since you also did a rebranding connected to the website? If I may yes. interrupt there, Tanya. Oh, <laughs> this is the, like... we're here for you guys. Like, <laughs> but, but but did you also look a lot at the messaging during this time? Because that was something we did as well. Like, how do we actually uh, get it out to the market? Uh, what yes. So the rebranding this, yeah. uh, during the rebranding phase, we took yeah. care of the messaging. Uh, value proposition, etc. What what you mentioned earlier, yeah. uh, and now that this is um, you know settled, I would say because it's always evolving. But now yeah. that it's a little bit uh, more settled, uh, we are taking on the next step, which is the website uh, redesign. Yeah. yeah, we didn't want to do it at the same time. I uh, wanted to be you know settled on the branding first. But to your point, it's always evolving. You should always look at your oh, messaging yes. like quarter, at least six months, and just see is this still resonating or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. I agree. Yeah. yeah. So everyone set your calendars yeah, every six, every half year. Take <laughs> some time, uh, go through it. And I think those are all valid. Like when we think of a trigger, we think of big triggers, but uh like, like you guys mentioned, it's it's little things like you you always have to be evolving and, and staying up to date. So um knowing these big milestones, um did, did you do any planning in advance before saying like, okay, this this is happening, we want to be live for summit or some other major milestone? What did you what did you plan in advance to mentally prepare uh, your team, your company uh, for this uh, big project that was coming? Shvam, can you uh, kick us off with that one? Sure, Tanya. So, uh, like you said, like, uh, you know, when we talk about a website redesign, so it's a very big project that we are thinking of, we are thinking to uh, create a new experience for our customers. So that involves a lot of planning. So uh, we did uh, make plans in advance, which involves uh, planning related to the roadmap, which we'll be following to, uh, you know, create our whole website, what kind of structure we'll be having, what kind of design ideas we'll be implementing. And, you know, when you plan all this, so your objectives should be clear with the higher authorities because the key stakeholders play a very important role, you know. So you have to plan uh, what uh, is their objectives are for your uh, website and what they think that uh, will be better for the customers. So uh, we did plan for, uh, 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 you know, our website redesign in advance, like uh, two months before we have initiated our uh, website redesign project. So uh, at that time duration, we have planned for uh, what kind of site map we will be having, what kind of site structure, map structure and menu structure we will be having what kind of uh, interaction or UI UX development we'll be doing, which can help us to uh, gauge more uh, traffic and uh, to increase our uh, sessions, you know. So for that, we have planned it uh, accordingly. So mainly the website structure, I, I would say, and uh, the overall look and feel and UI and UX of the website and uh, obviously the cost which is associated with it so that is also one of the factor that you have to plan that yeah. it should not go beyond the budget uh, and uh, the last but not the least if you are planning to get your website on a cms platform so uh, it would be better if you can plan about uh, training your uh, colleagues or training your team members of that CMS platform. So what we did and could be helpful for others who are here today to, uh, you know, listen to us. So uh, what I did was uh, I asked my team members to do a certification of uh, HubSpot CMS, which has helped them a lot, which has helped us a lot as well, <laughs> because uh, uh, through that, we we have uh, been able to cut down the costing of uh, development and design part because uh, at our redesigning journey, uh, you know, everyone was involved in our website. If you say that the content writers, the graphic designers, the social media marketers, 
they all were involved in it uh, uh, we have planned a, a training sessions of how the cms would work how you can put up a content on it how you can publish a new page new blog it is quite easy so uh, yeah that is something which uh, we have uh, planned it strategically so it can lay down our costs and no. also would help uh, you know our team members to know more about our website so yeah these were the uh -huh. few plans that we did more than a few there was quite a quite a, a good list there and uh, it was interesting you you really triggered uh when you were talking about training probably everybody yeah. on this call sells an it project in one way shape or Correct. form and yeah. we shouldn't look at a marketing redesign like a website redesign in in a other way than a it project in itself and we all have probably written a blog about how training is an important aspect of user adoption and making it work and understanding and success <clears throat> so why would this be any different so i think that's that's a great call out when we're thinking about planning and because you you, you listed off all the different uh, people in a marketing team who are involved in it so it's even more important uh to like have that plan of when everyone's going to come together uh to learn about it so um we have a question um so you mentioned website structure did any yes. of your change of the structure of your main menu or your subfolders did any of your change of the structure of your main menu or your subfolders as a part of this redesign so did your uh did your general structure of your website change and i guess how did you do it what did that look like uh i'm sorry that was that was for you uh, yeah I, okay. I'm looking at you, but so, then I realize yeah. you don't know. How I'm looking at you. <laughs> yeah, so definitely uh, we did uh, change our basic structure and the general structure uh, for uh, you know um, our new website because uh, we are thinking to portray ourselves as uh, the new Dynatech. You know, we we are not the same that we used to before five years. And we want to portray ourselves uh, and, you know, position ourselves in the market in a way which can help us uh, to, uh, you know, get our clients the view that uh, we are planning for them. So for that purpose, yeah, we I can say that there was a menu change uh, part. And uh, at that time, I have to, uh, you know, plan for further strategies, I think, on which we will be uh, deep diving further in the session, like SEO part, which gets affected. And, uh, you know, the URL structures part. So whenever you are thinking to change the overall menu or maybe some items or some folders of those menu items. So you have to take care of few of the technical pointers like, uh, you know, what will be the uh, redirections you will require? What will be the, you know, uh, proper flow? You have to maintain a, a flat navigation. It should not be a deep navigation. A user experience should not get affected when you go deep dive into a website. So yes, that's uh, they were the few pointers which I can say we took care of when uh, we planned to uh, change the menu structure. Oh, you know? Thank yeah. you. Um, I'm going to stop for a quick commercial break. I want to say uh, thank you once again to our sponsor, User Active. They are a web design and marketing firm uh, for ERP partners. Um, get two to three more qualified leads out of your website. And I think that is uh, one of our objectives when we're looking at a website redesign is how do we crack that code on getting more in. So sometimes uh, we're too close or we, we are looking for an outside perspective on things. So uh, if any of you are thinking about it, please um, support the community and um, thank you again to User Active. Reach out to them and they can uh, help you through uh, cracking the code to transform your website and really make it a lead generating machine that we all um, hope and aspire to in um, 
in this redesign process. So thank you again. You allow us to keep these sessions free and keep the lights on here at um, the Channel Marketing Academy. So um, now back to our regularly uh, scheduled program. Um, so we talked about planning. Now let's like look back. So um, hindsight, what are some of the things that uh, you would consider that you didn't think of right away? Like if you were to go back and redo it, what would be something you would plan for or that you would include from the get-go that um, you only realized when you were in the process, you're like, ah, oh, that, that was a gotcha or that was something I should have, um, ma it made it more long. Um, Roland, any any hindsights, words of wisdom uh, to share with the group? Um. I mean, the planning is, you know, one of the biggest thing, uh, you know, for me, planning for a full redesign is, you know, six, six, I don't know, 60 days almost of planning. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, you know, the rest is the technical stuff. But um, I would say that the things that I didn't necessarily think about was um, all the technical aspect. You know, when we talk about web redesign, you choose template, you choose kind of a layout uh, and then you know, you now you start, you need to start thinking about the actual structure. So uh, Shivam like had a very, some very good points on, you know, structure, URL structure, how to rethink uh, the navigation to um, really take into account the journey, you know, the path, you know, that we want our visitor to take whatever page they land on. So all of this needs to be cohesive throughout the website, obviously. Um, I would say, I mean, that's kind of a little bit outdated, but still important. Um, on my last re uh, redesign, I was thinking responsiveness, right? Responsiveness. So, and I thought it, it was enough, but more and more Google is thinking about mobile first. You know, it's like they don't even, yeah. Google do, doesn't even look at the website on the de desktop version. It only looks at it on the mobile version. So you need to take that into account. For example, I mean, in my case, over 60% of our visitors are coming from desktop. So I feel like I don't really need to put too much effort on the responsiveness, on the user, uh, you know, on the mobile uh, first, um, you know, approach. But the reality is that I need to um, just because Google is the one that is, you know, uh, ranking my website and displaying it for people. And if um, Google doesn't know how to read or doesn't appreciate um, my website, um, um, you know, it, it, it won't push it uh, for the content that I want. And that's something I think that is, you know, overlooked by a lot of marketers who are redesigning. They're focusing on the visual, on the journey, you know, which is already deeper, way deeper than just the visual, but they forget about, you know, how do they, how does a user find your website it is probably through a research, right? So you want to, you want to do that for the user um, experience, but also for um, all the technical aspect, the SEO aspect and, um, you know, feeding to the changing algorithms, etc. So that I think is the aspect that usually is underlooked or uh, the hardest to figure out because, you know, it's, as I said, it's an ongoing thing that moves and, and choosing the right strategy is sometimes a gamble. So yeah, that's, that's definitely something that needs to be done in the planning. I, I think we, every, every month I, I see a theme emerge from this and I, and for this one, I'm starting to notice that we don't uh, like strategy keeps coming up objectives. Why are you doing this? Like just doing this for funsies. Uh, there's a lot of other things you can do uh, with your marketing budget, time and energy. Um, there is a lot of thought and planning that goes in behind this because that comes back to strategy and all these other components, because it really is the heart of your, your marketing when, when we look at it. So um, don't just look at it from a pretty pictures, but everything in the background. And I think we'll, we'll use that strategy as the, the key yeah. um, focus <laughs> for, for this one. <clears throat> And I want to add that uh, also, um, you know, a lot of marketers who go through a web redesign think that the job is done when you launch the new website, but there is a lot to be done on the monitoring. Um, I, we, we spend like two more months after the launch to correct errors that happens you know, on the back end. Um, and that I think is the, people really don't realize that, you know, changing the structure URL, changing the navigation, going through like, you know, 
200 blogs that you need to redirect plus the internal linking all of this breaks when you go through a redesign and um, and that needs to be monitored to make sure that you don't drop in s seo so um, yeah long long <laughs> that's so we that's are the... lucky that we didn't have a never written a lot of blogs you know so we have prepared them now you know so when we just we just did yep. some simple redirects we didn't barely have any pages so that, so that was nice though but wow. uh, <laughs> Yeah. Maybe next no, that, time it will be harder. Yeah, yeah. Me, you'll be mentally prepared for, yeah. for, for, for the next one. Um, I think that's a good segue to the question that just came in for Shem. Uh, you mentioned that you changed the platform, uh, you going over to HubSpot. So how did that affect your website's visitors as well as your SEO? Um, did you notice um, any changes that you had to be aware of or gotchas? So definitely, uh, Tanya, when we uh, talk about, uh, you know, uh, coming from one CMS to different CMS, so definitely it is going to affect you. But uh, surprisingly, HubSpot has supported us a lot. You know, we were able to uh, regain our uh, organic traffic within a month after our launch. And that's a very big thing and big achievement for us you know because uh, the one thing that we were uh, very afraid of is to lose our organic traffic and the uh, organic rankings because that is something which uh, does uh, play the crucial role in b2b saas so um, i will say that hubspot has supported us a lot and uh, you know I, we uh, didn't face any kind of trouble in uh, you know in the aspect of uh, losing any traffic or losing any uh, organic rankings yeah we struggled on few of the keywords i will i must say that uh, so yeah we are uh, on the part of uh, recovery to that but when we uh, talk about uh, you know <clears throat> the migration process and uh, also the user friendliness so that is something we uh, had an advantage of on HubSpot. So it was quite a, you know, a fruitful journey for us. So uh, I would, uh, I would not say that uh, Ronald and Joel has to uh, think about HubSpot because WordPress is also good. But uh, yeah, uh, HubSpot uh, has played a pretty well role and uh, it was a quite a good journey. And uh, we didn't face any uh, technical issues. We didn't face any, uh, you know, uh, or organic traffic or uh, maybe uh, what we say organizational, structural, and uh, website structural issues. So those were not there. So it was quite a smooth journey. I would that say is... to that answer. Yeah. We we love a happy ending. So uh, glad to hear yes. that. Keep those questions coming. These are great. Great questions uh, in in the chat. And I think it also, uh, you mentioned like reaching out to your vendor and things like that. I I think we shouldn't be ashamed that we all need help. We, we most of us in this channel, we're generalists when it comes to marketing. We, this is such a technical complex with multiple layers that we, we can need help from others and agencies or, other uh, people in the community who can help us through this and not to be scared to reach out to them because yeah uh, we work hard for our organic searches we don't we don't want to lose those um, in, in the process so um, I, I'm seeing the time fly by I'm like this should have been a special two-hour session uh, we might have to uh, recap uh, with another one uh, in the future so I'm going to just uh, quickly move on to uh, Joel. So who was involved in your process? You mentioned that there was two of you um, hands on. Who did what on the team? Did you have uh, writers uh, who helped you with your layout? Um, and we're, let's let's keep the SEO train running, too, because that's a big part of it. Um, who, who, who was your posse when doing this redesign? Uh, I'm going to take this from the second version here because now we're actually starting to work in more like project-based or better planning. Yeah. So after we launched it in October, after that, we hired a, a product marketing manager, which has been, she's an amazing copywriter. So for the next uh, launch we're doing here now, 
uh, she's doing basically all the, the content in terms of writing. So all the copy and then me uh, and um, uh, another colleague of ours uh, helps with creating maybe the design, some of the design parts and things like that. But uh, so we're we're trying to run. I think it's important also, like if, if it's something you want to outsource, maybe it is those articles and things that maybe just just are there to drive traffic. Uh, you know, that you don't maybe always need that thought leadership around. But when you want to create something that really resonates, you know, and if you want to have more, I think it's important for me at least to have it in-house and use that competence we have here. And then all the technical parts and all of that that we don't see, you know, but needs to be there, that technical expertise, which I try to take help wherever we need it. Uh, because uh, since we don't have it in-house, we're a small team, you know. So so I would say, like, internally, we whatever we can do all all the, we can use the knowledge we have about our product and who we are and all of that and just implement that but when it comes to like being a developer seo wise in general and this actually one thing that just popped into my head now what's been really valuable is actually to have a project lead from our agency that just can keep everything together because we're doing a lot of different things everywhere so since we don't have it here have that one person that's really important just have one to just stay st- online keeping track of all the sprints and all of that and just making sure like are you doing your work because sometimes you need a kick kick in your back you know that (laughs) make make stuff happen now because there's a lot of things coming back and forth so so i would say like we are very agile here in general so 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 we do whatever we can ourselves but uh but yeah we we probably we we need ours and uh, the other help that i discussed here from uh, our agency and then, yeah. of course, have a lot of different competence inside their house. Yeah. And I think that that's important, too. Life keeps going on. Like, yes, the mar- like a, a website is a big piece of your strategy and all that. You still have events. You still have to keep the lights on for sending out um, outbound. Uh, OK, well, it's event season. What about our booth? What about all these other things? Um, sales enablement pieces. So yeah, having someone just to keep the, the you pushing forwards and keep your blinders on when you need to, because yeah, there's there's a lot of work that goes into it, and in that you have someone. Don't underestimate the copy as well, even though over the years it has just become only one or two lines and and stuff like that one or two lines over 20 30 50 pages well that that adds up quickly so um having someone who can who their superpower is writing yeah is is really helpful as well so yeah getting your help from wherever you can um that 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 is great so um so when you're like how did you work with a firm how did you choose them what qualities did you look for Fram, can you tell us a little bit more about that process and and how you how 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 do you pick your your friends and how do you pick how you're going to move forward with um an agency sure daniel so uh when we thought of uh, you know hiring any agency or uh, taking any outside help so first we uh, look for uh, authentic partners like you know we uh, do in microsoft solutions as well we look out for good microsoft solutions partner so that's how we work for uh, our website as well we uh, uh, did look at their experiences what they have done before what kind of uh, website they have delivered, what kind of capabilities they have, what kind of uh, team they will be deploying for our website and what kind of, uh, you know, skills they have for us. And one part that I am particularly uh, curious about to know uh, from our vendors is uh, their creativity level. You know, because we are thinking to uh, get our website uh, more of a animated uh, version and more of a, you know, it should have a, that kind of animation, that kind of effects, that kind of use of JavaScript. So obviously, uh, I uh, personally prefer these three things uh, while selecting any, uh, you know, vendor for our uh, website redesign so their experience their team capability and their team skills these three things uh, we have firstly uh, you know make a checklist of (laughs) 
that yeah we want these these things at any cost i think that that's a great trinity to to start with or pillars to to look for and i think it's also to remember that you know this is this is your chance you're you're going to be together for four, six, 12 months, depending on how long this takes, it's important that you have that fit. So to ask the questions, have your list of what's important from the get go, I think we should not be um, <clears throat> shy around that. And we have another question that, that just came in um, from Tapan. Uh, while transitioning, uh, what to do with your old blogs? Shall I transition them as as is, or should I launch it with all new blogs? So um, has anyone had experience around that? Or what do you think? We also yeah. have our resident um, blog writer on um, Anya, if you have anything, you might want to um, talk about that as well. But Roland, start us off. Yeah, um, I mean, don't, don't not transfer the content that you have created. Um, these are, it, it's super important that you keep that content uh, for your redesign. Um, there are ways to retire old uh, blogs, but absolutely uh, keep your blog, you know, like don't just get rid of, I don't know, 200, you know, pages of content for your new redesign. It's gonna impact you very badly on terms of SEO. Um, transfer them, uh, it will help you maintain uh, that level and correct after. Because as Shivan said, uh, it took them like a month to get back their organic traffic, which is very impressive, very good job. But sometimes it takes way longer. And if you're already shooting yeah. yourself in the foot by not keeping content that is already ranked, that is already indexed, that is already followed by Google, you're pretty much like cleaning up like half of your website and starting fresh. And no one wants to start fresh when it comes to SEO. Yeah, one small thing I would like to add here uh, to Ronald's, uh, you know, conversation. So uh, definitely when we uh, talk about blog transition, so you should not uh, think about, you know, completely changing your content. So uh, that is going to affect you in uh, terms of SEO. And uh, obviously, it's always good when you are doing a new redesign. So it's better that you can uh, you know modify your existing content so it can help you a lot that is one strategy that we have done which helped us a lot because we know that the google crawler is going to come to our website again they are going to crawl our website and index uh, it uh, in a newer way so uh, if we will add new content on it so uh, definitely it is going to help us in organic ranking so yeah that that is something which I would like to give a suggestion to the new goers. So yeah, that is there. Thank you. All right, so we have five minutes left. I'm going to merge the last questions together. Um, we'll do just that <clears throat> around Robin. So um, what lessons did you learn? What was the hardest part? What is your advice for others who are willing to, to take this project on? Joel, uh, why don't you kick us off? Yeah, and I mean, uh, I thought about one thing actually, uh, and Shivan talked about it a bit as well in terms of to think about is to, if you work with an agency, uh, of course you have your list of things uh, that, you know, uh, you, that you just want to uh, scratch off basically or check off, but also choose someone that challenge you a bit, you know, because mm -hmm. you, of, you often have ideas, you know, that like this will work, this will do it. And then just like, of course, then also <coughs> they should... I acknowledge being challenged by you, but but find that find someone that you click with, from like that you know you can spitball with a bit ideas and just work together with like they are part of your team. I would say because working with an agency and this is before I've been uh, at sign up as well that you don't. I mean, if you don't have that inside that you like working together, it will be hell for six months. I mean, so it's not only about this like ABC things. It's all about all also about the also about uh, the chemistry between you and the people you're working with at the agency because you will probably live together almost like uh, yeah. and then also uh, now if you are if you're in europe the gdpr and the cookie policy part that's uh, yeah i can say like this uh, before the, our old website didn't have a gdpr even if you i mean you couldn't almost get rid of getting tracked but now we have lost maybe 50 percent of what we track for example so we also 
so we can't identify everybody, but it is what it is. We want to be compliant. So, so I mean, there is also something to bring with you to always. It's very important uh, to with you when you now start launching your new, more modern websites, if you're in Europe. Even if you're not in Europe, yeah, websites even if you're are not. global. I, I think, yeah. you know, it has yeah. to, you you have to keep that in mind. Um, and, I guess, or yeah. what if in, in six months you, you, you have a new go-to-market strategy in Europe? Um, don't ignore that because that is a, like you losing half your, uh, half your tracking base. Um, yeah, no, that, that's definitely something to, to keep in mind. Uh, Shvam. What, what last words of wisdom for for the audience here so yeah like uh joel said uh you know that's a very very important factor that i have uh, skipped before like uh, you know compliance and uh, you know data compliance so we do have new data compliance in different regions nowadays if you are having one website which is targeting for different countries so you have to take care of gdpr policy new uh, data policy that is going to implement in usa as well your cookies for policy and how you are going to have, uh, you know, utilize the data that is going to come on your website. So that is there. And uh, last and uh, advice for everyone uh, is that uh, uh, don't uh, just uh, focus on the conversions of your website, but try to create a good uh, user experience try to uh, focus on user experience and try to focus how you can uh, give them a great experience when someone is landing on your website because at Dynatech we have always considered it as our digital property so if you are calling your customers to your digital property so your shop should look uh, amazing than others and that is the key game so yeah that that would be my last advice <laughs> no great great advice and i i we we have to make sure it's like when our mother-in-laws come over we make sure we clean everything extra squeaky clean so why wouldn't we do that with our with our website as well so yeah, roland take yeah. us home one last minute uh, sure. So on the what is kind of the hardest part is to maintain, you know, the regular marketing still going, right? It takes so much effort, so much time, so much of your mindset, of your brain to go through a redesign. Uh, I think the hardest part is to continue to maintain the overall marketing effort that you regularly do, um, knowing that uh, you will probably have to do a light redesign every year, year and a half, and a full web redesign every three years. That's the reality of things. So that's the hardest part, knowing that you're going to have to do it again um, for some of the lessons and advice um, um, you know she, she, uh, Shivam talks about you user experience it's super important of course the website is just a way to present content so to me one of the most important aspects that you really need to focus on is the content strategy you know your content strategy is, is is the heart of the website the website as i said is just a way to present that content and the user experience is how they're going to interact with the content but it all starts with the content st strategy and um, <clears throat> last advice is prepare your team for this shift of mindset so usually Six months even starting the planning, because I know it's coming, I tell everyone, hey, Q4, we're going to have a redesign. You know, everyone in my team, but also the other leaders, the other department managers, et cetera, even though they're not going to be involved uh, in the web redesign itself, website redesign, sorry, I prepare their mindsets. And you would be so surprised to see the number of feedback that I receive even before starting. <laughs> so, so people are eager to share what they see, what they would like for the new website, etc. cetera, um, even if they're not, you know, in the marketing team. So prepare the mindset of your team, of your company. I think it will go a long way. Saw so seeds in everybody's head. I, I love yeah. that. Exactly. To just mention it, small pieces and show things yep. here and there. Then you, then you bring everybody yeah. together. So it's a, that's a great uh, point, actually. 
Yeah. Everyone has had such good yeah. points today. I wish I can like keep this going. I know we all have other back to back meetings, so we're gonna have to cut you. I'm guys going off. home. I'm going home. Yeah. Now. Oh yeah. <laughs> Except you know. I was starting my day. <laughs> starting your day or ending your day. Um, yeah. wherever you are, or if you're listening to this, thank you so much. Please reach out to us. Uh, what did you learn? What did you like? Um, the uh, our three panelists are in the chat. Thank you so much again to our sponsor. Uh, if we're looking, if you're looking for an agency, please reach out to them. Uh, now you know which questions to ask and what to 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 look for. And finally, my shameless plug: uh, we have a course planned for June. It's a deep dive into marketing over multiple generations. This also includes on how how do you get all those different people on the website. Super important. Please sign up. Go check it out. I see the link is in the chat. I am over time. Shame on me. Thank you again to the three of you. Um, it, you. It's really been a pleasure. And I hope everyone has learned something today. I always do. So have a good one. Bye now. Yeah. Bye, 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 everyone. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Tanya. Thank, Thank you, Thank you Thanks, so much. Tanya. Such great insights. The chat was blowing up, though. That's that's really good as well. So mm -hmm. thanks again. Have a good one. Bye-bye.